It was tough for me because I had finally decided to become involved. And I wanted to be able to come back to the fraternity, homecomings and everything else and help make it what it was for me. The chapter closing, it, it was like a piece of me being taken away. There was no more house to go to. Ten years, we had seven sisters and I, I didn't understand the events that led up to it, but I was deeply hurt and depressed and sad. Being there towards some of those last couple of years and seeing that things were kind of heading into a direction we didn't really want them to head in, uh, I wasn't surprised, um, but that doesn't mean I wasn't disappointed. Hindsight's always, you know, 2020. You, you, you find out what was good, what was bad, and uh, I think we learned a big lesson from it, and it's going to make us stronger in the end. We have a chance for a fresh start, to regain our identity, to, to reestablish Epsilon Gamma as um, the, you know, one of the premier chapters of Beta Theta Pi. Ironically, the house was paid off weeks later, yet years of wear and tear had taken its toll. During the summer of 2002, the second floor and the exterior of the house were thoroughly renovated under the leadership of Epsilon Gamma Housing Corporation President Tom Ulver and Vice President Phil Adler. The decision to renovate the house came about as a result of Ken Breen's work on the strategic plan. We were faced with a house that really needed a facelift. And there were just things that the city recognized um, as hazards. We decided to move ahead and renovate our existing structure so that we had a saleable product for somebody to live in so we could eventually put our new members, our young undergraduates, back in the house. Epsilon Gamma alumni, the Epsilon Gamma Housing Corporation, and the general fraternity immediately began planning for the return of the chapter to the CMU campus in the fall of 2004. I think it was important to have a bit of a relationship with some of the university administrators and by building up some credibility there, uh, we were able to have those tough discussions about why Beta Theta Pi should be let back on Central Michigan University's campus. It was incredibly tough, but we negotiated through the Dean of Students office and uh, our Greek advisor, and they were able to give us a second chance. And we're glad for it. When I found out the chapter was coming back, I was really excited because I knew that it wasn't coming back in any way that any of us have ever known. Um, but what's so exciting about that is Beta's initiative to head into the future of what a fraternity should be. Well, I think the Beta Theta Pi of today does all the things that Beta Theta Pi has always done, lifelong friendship opportunities and opportunities to, to work with the group. But today, we have the added opportunities of leadership development and personal development, which have really brought Beta Theta Pi to the fore in the fraternal world. We're creating a more responsible fraternity based on values and behaviors. And with those values and behaviors in place, the men of principle will offer a great alternative to the stereotypical fraternity life. And it's made all the difference. It has reversed the trend of declining membership numbers. It has increased our alumni involvement, our reputation on campuses, and our expansion to uh, dormant chapters and new universities. So going forward with Beta Theta Pi, we've, we've set the trend, we've set the example that other fraternities and sororities will follow for years to come. We're going to start this chapter over again. And they don't know anything of the old EG. The proud history and things that you want to insert back into the culture, that's appropriate. The message of Mentor Principal is what we're going to be recruiting on. The feelings I had when I heard that the chapter was coming back, it was great excitement. I kind of had, you know, 2004 circled on my calendar, talked about it a lot with family and friends. I knew that I wanted to put as much effort into it so that this could be a successful return. An advising team was formed under the direction of David Steiner and founding father Greg Compton. We've got a new foundation and we've got the right type of foundation just a shining example for what a fraternity can be on that campus. We were a strong chapter, a proud chapter, and we should be right there again. We're, we're not only trying to you know, build these leaders of tomorrow, but we're trying to break away from a lot of the old stereotypes that were in the past. And uh, it's the kind of thing where if you don't do it right, then you know, our success is going to be significantly hampered. In the fall of 2004, 
The fraternity's director of expansion, David Ray, British Columbia 2000, led the recruitment efforts to bring Beta Theta Pi back to CMU's campus. With the help of education consultant Vito Brandel, St. Louis 04, the effort was successful. First few days on campus were uh, a whirlwind. We would have nine hour days just sitting by the table and uh, explaining to everybody that, you know, asking, do you want to go beta? Do you want to go for it? Well, at first I was, you know, I was a GDI and uh, I didn't want anything to do with, with a fraternity or sorority or any of that stuff. I didn't really have any intention of joining a fraternity, but I uh, got to see what it was all about and how different it is. And really found out what beta was about. I. I couldn't pass it up. I joined looking for leadership opportunities and I, I thought that I could learn things during my college years from Veda that, that the college could not teach me. On the 22nd day of the first month of 2005, six earnest young men were initiated on the roles of the Epsilon Gamma chapter of Beta Theta Pi. When we finally went down to Oxford and got initiated, it wasn't that that was the final stepping stone but that was what brought us together. Everything just came together at that point and making me realize what I really wanted to do and why I joined Beta. Being on one knee in the Hall of Chapters was one of the most refreshing and eye-opening experiences of my life and getting to know the men that I live with and associate myself with better on a daily basis continues to make my life more complete. The chapter regained its title as Best Academic Fraternity on Campus in its first semester back on campus. The next semester, four more men joined the roles of the Epsilon Gamma chapter, including Brandel. Just pure joy and excitement when the guys were nice enough to give me uh, my own EG roll number, uh, of which I'm very proud to have. Uh, I wasn't really actually looking to join a fraternity, and these guys got me uh, involved a little bit with the recruitment through scholarship. The guys are awesome, so I mean, I, I, that's why I joined. During the summer of 2005, the house at 814 South Main Street underwent a massive interior renovation under the watchful eye of Phil Adler. The entire membership of the undergraduate chapter moved into the house to begin the fall 2005 semester. The first year was a lot of work, um, but the high points to the work is knowing that you're working hard for it to pay off, and it's paying off right now, me sitting at this counter in the house, because that's what we all work for, is living together. The house is immaculate. It's a, a different house. Um, it's a lot brighter. Three years ago, it was just a dark house, but it's more livable, it's brighter. I was blown away when I first got into the house. It was just remarkable. Seeing what it was last year into what it was becoming this year, I. I couldn't wait to move in and start living in this house. The alums have been absolutely fabulous and I want to thank all of them because without them we were a bunch of chickens with our heads cut off honestly. We're so lucky to have the people we had donate time and money just to help us and I mean we really are truly blessed. 